Hey, it's Monday night, time for VoiceOver Body Shop. Boy, did we have a great weekend at NAMM. We're going to show all sorts of cool stuff, right, George? Oh, yeah, it's going to be a great one. We've got lots of cool video. Our guest tonight is the one and only Tom Deere. Uh, he is an expert on voiceover marketing, and he's a coach, and he's going to tell us how to better run our voiceover businesses. So I'll bet you have lots of questions for him. Coming up right after the intro we'll be right there two men twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere together in one place george whittem the home studio engineer to the stars a virginia tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to become a successful voice artist, VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success, the VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hi there, I'm Dan Leonard in the West. And I'm George in a little bit less West. <laughs> Not quite <laughs> as West. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. <laughs> Slight non synchronicity tonight. But anyway, uh, well, it's been an interesting weekend. Uh, George and I went to uh, the National Association of is it Music Manufacturers or. How do you say that? Close, close enough. Music merchants. Music merchants. Yeah. Well, they're manufacturers, too. I mean, it was all manufacturers that were there. Anyway, we saw all the cool gear, and uh, we're going to talk about that. We've got lots of video to show you tonight, so uh, you know, get your, your appetite wet for all sorts of cool tech stuff that we saw there. Uh, also, as we said, Tom Deere is coming up in uh, about half an hour. We're going to talk about the VO business and how to make your business more efficient and all that kind of stuff. So uh, stay tuned for all of that. Uh, again, if you've got a question at any time, whether it's for George and I or for our guest or for the universe in general, uh, put it in our chat room where the amazing Jack Daniel is sitting here right at this very moment, typing away and keeping in communication with you. And if you've never been in our chat room, why not? All you got to do if you're on our homepage is click on chat room. Or you can do the chat in Facebook as well. Did I explain that okay? I... No, you're you're over here. You're well done. Sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Got to remember, it's the other way. You're you're up that way. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, it's now time for. And now the voiceover extra VOBS news. The latest and most comprehensive voiceover industry news. Brought to you live. Extra news. Local marketing. Now, most of you know Dave Cavassier. If not personally, like I do, then online. Dave has been a person, has, has personally and virtually been everywhere in the voiceover industry for more than a decade. He is currently, though, president of World Voices Organization, or WOVO, 
a host and presenter at industry conferences, writer of a daily blog on all things VO, frequent contributor to VoiceOver Extra, and until last month, he did all this part-time. When does he sleep? I know for a fact that he doesn't. Dave is also an Emmy-winning broadcaster and former nightly news anchor at KLAS-TV in Las Vegas. In December, he said adios to that long broadcasting career to become a full-time voice actor. And how's he doing? I'm doing great, he tells VoiceOver Extra. I'm plenty busy, but now I control my time and no one else is driving the schedule. It's liberating. Well, Dave was certainly prepared for the full-time leap. And as always, he continues to prepare us for his voiceover success with the wisdom of his experiences. And he's got to teach me how to use this teleprompter. In a recent article on VoiceOver Extra, for instance, Dave shares how to attract local media to feature your voiceover business. First, why bother? Well, according to Dave, your local contacts may lead to the best paying, longest lasting, or even the most fulfilling jobs in your voiceover playbook. It depends on the size of your market, he explains. But there is a rule of thumb that your voiceover business, though global, should start locally. And besides, people are fascinated by what voiceover professionals do because of the mystique involved. They really don't understand what we do or how we do it, so the curiosity is high. Plus, local producers learn about you through the media. They may be relieved to know there's a seasoned voiceover pro living in the community. You just got to get them to notice you. So here are five ways that Dave recommends we use to get local media to notice us. One, volunteer with a local nonprofit to voice their PSA, a PR video, or whiteboard presentation. Two, offer to speak to any local Rotary Chamber of Commerce or other civic organization about your work. Three, approach your local community college about doing an introductory class on voiceover, including time on the mic. This is a visual that TV cameras love. And, of course, you'll be available for the interview, sharing your story and explaining that you're just there to help others by answering questions about your most interesting vocation. P.S. Make sure to let the local media outlets know about these higher education events and offer your audio engineering, marketing, or social media skills to a local community college in a guest seminar. Four. Read out loud in book reading programs at local schools, libraries, churches, or even senior homes. This may not sound very exciting, but such acts of service are favorite topics for local journalists seeking to tell the story of how a local business person is giving back to the community. And five, create a relationship with any of the local reporters. Watch their programs or read their publications to find out which reporters have a heart for local news features and stories. A good ploy sometimes is to get a trusted friend to speak to that reporter for you, so you don't have to toot your own horn. Also begin following those reporters on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Get on their social media conversations and let them know you exist. On a day when their assignment editor expects them to come up with a new story from the community, they might remember that voiceover guy or gal to call for a good feature. Local reporters are usually desperately seeking story ideas from the community, but can't know everything. Help them see your unique business. Dave sure knows that side of the biz, and you can learn more about all of this in Dave's article, now at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. So, we, we have to wish Dave good luck, you know. And I know he's in the chat room there somewhere. He's got to be Good there. Good luck, Dave. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy that had a great career as a, as, a, as a news anchor in, 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 uh, in Las Vegas. And, uh, yeah, he is watching tonight. Good. Um, and, and, by the way, just the superest of super guys. Just a wonderful person and great advice. So And a great writer. And, 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 a, and a very long writer at that. Uh, anyway, what's up in tech? <clears throat> well, while we were walking around the trade show floor at NAM, we did see a lot of cool stuff that we shot video of, and you'll be seeing a little bit of that tonight. But we'll have a lot more for you to see over the next couple of weeks as we roll out the video. They'll be up on our Facebook, I believe our Facebook and our YouTube pages. Yep. For those that are one or the other. Or both. Uh, 
stay tuned on those places for more footage. But there was one thing we didn't cover because it, well, it wasn't a vendor at the event. It was just something I ran in. We stumbled on. That's right. At one of the booths. Um, and this is a company called Versari or Versaire. They make all sorts of office dividers and flexible partitions and things like that to use, you know, mainly in, in commercial spaces, office spaces, schools, things like that. But I, I've seen their stuff for a while, and it's always looked interesting. But this one particular thing that's being used is their, is their Versa panel room divider. And we saw it being used in a totally different context. In fact, one of the videos we're going to show today, which I think is the f company Fluid, has it set up. You'll probably see it in the shot uh, as we talk about the product. You'll see it set up in the context of a voiceover booth. Um, but what's cool about this room divider is it's, it's segmented. It's totally flexible. You can bend it in a U. You can make it more of a rectangle shape. You can just sort of make it like you see in the picture right now, which is just sort of a partial room divider. Um, it's really cool and seems extremely well made. And the, each of those sections that you see is very thick, dense acoustical material. I don't know what product it is. I did squeeze it while I was there. I'm always the guy poking the acoustic stuff. <laughs> Try drives them Don't crazy. squeeze the Charmin. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was very dense and, and it felt very substantial. Um, so it seems like it's probably a, a pretty good absorber and it absorbs equally on both sides. And what, and what people don't think about is when you have a product like that, that's open to the room and it absorbs equally on both sides, it's even more effective because whatever sound does escape from that enclosure that makes it into the room is then even further damped by the back of the panel. So it's an extremely uh, flexible and I dare say cost-effective solution. It's certainly not one of the cheapest things. I mean, you can't beat the, the low cost of some moving blankets on some PVC pipe. But if you're looking for something a little more attractive, a little more flexible, a little easier to put up and take down, this thing is pretty cool. I believe it's around 650 bucks, 660 uh, as in it's eight feet long and it's shipped for free. They ship, they seem to ship everything to the 48 days for free. So that's pretty cool. That's over at Versari.com, B R S A R E.com. Um, that's the Versa panel. And then I was searching around today and somebody was asking about products from Audi Mute. Um, I have a client in Canada. And so we were trying to find vendors that are Canadian or Canada friendly. And one I know for sure is called Prime Acoustic. They're a Canadian company. But this other one, Audimute, apparently also ships and sells in Canada. And they have a kit that is a complete absorption kit to treat, as they say specifically in the listing, or a small voiceover booth. And what's cool about this kit that makes it kind of unique is... That's it down there. It's the one that has some gray, some tan, and then some tape rolled up next to it there. Uh, Susan, if you want to click on that one. Um, what's cool about it is it includes a variety of products, not just absorbers. It includes the absorbing panels. It includes a product that's much more dense for doing isolation that you could hang over, say, the doorway to a closet. And it includes some weather stripping and a seal, a door sweep for the door. So that would be a little bit more of a comprehensive product. It includes all the stuff. That's the one. And um, it's pretty sweet. And it's 450 bucks. So that's a pretty high bang for the buck ratio there for if you have a small closet or walk-in closet you want to treat, that might be an all-in-one solution for you. So that's some of the cool stuff that's popped up on my radar. Again, radar, other than, again, other than the stuff at NAM. Yeah. There was a ton of cool stuff at NAM. We'll be yapping on about that a lot tonight. and god there are so many people there it's uh, and ten thousand plus i believe was yes. the number i heard yes and i think we met each and every one of them some of them dressed very strangely and some of them like regular people anyway we're going to show you some 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 stuff coming up from them in just a minute so uh stay tuned tom deer coming up in a little bit as well talk about your voiceover business so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. 
You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> Is 2018 going to be the year you take your voiceover practice to the next level? If not, you can go back to checking your email while this message is airing. I also think there's some leftover tie way in the back of the fridge over there somewhere. Anyway, if you're serious about dramatically upping your level of success, I want you to go to a very, very special URL. VO, the number two, gogo.com forward slash VOBS. That's VO2gogo.com forward slash VOBS. Uh, if you want to get the best stuff you can out there and have a great job as a voice actor, this is the place to go. Join hundreds of voice actors. Join them. They're there. I swear. Join the hundreds of voice practitioners around the world who have decided to invest in themselves for this new year. Learn voiceover from the ground up or from where you are to where you want to be. VO2GoGo.com forward slash V-O-B-S. Let's make 2018 your year. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hi, Dan and George are here at NAM, which stands for... The National Association of Music Merchants. All right. And all I the think. stuff that we use in voiceover, of course, is made for music. We <laughs> just true. adapt it. It's so true. we're here where all the manufacturers are, and we're going to look at some of the stuff that you guys drool over, right? That's right. I got a list of vendors we're going to see from Sennheiser Neumann to Erlen Microphones. Centrance, the makers of Micport Pro. Ooh, and we the, get to see the mixer face. The mixer face in the Finally. Flesh. Yeah, a lot of great new stuff and stuff that we've seen before, but things that we're going to focus on stuff that you guys in voiceover with home studios really care about. Right. So come with us and we'll have a great time at NAM. We're here at NAMM 2018 in Anaheim, and we've been waiting. George and I have been talking about a product, but you might be familiar with the Centrance MicPort Pro, which a lot of you are probably still using because they're a great product. But we're talking with Michael Goodman. Michael, the president of uh, Centrance, and they have a new product that we've been waiting for the rollout for some time, the Mixer Face. Tell us about it. Yeah, um, thank you for stopping by, Dan. We're very excited to have you here. We uh, love our supporters in the voiceover community. Uh, we love the work you guys do, and uh, obviously we're always envious in how you can speak and how we can't speak. <laughs> um, this uh, product right here, Mixerface R4, is our newest uh, member of the mobile recording interface family. What this product does is it connects to a phone, and it turns your phone into a mobile recording studio, so a DAW essentially, right? If I pick a phone here, you can connect the mixer face to a phone. They're about the same size. And then now, you, if you have a DAW or some kind of software on the phone, like for example, Twisted Wave, which I know is used a lot, or some other software, you can do all of your recording on the phone and post-processing on the phone. This is what's different from a typical situation when you use a recording interface and you record to a computer. Or even if you use a, you know, a, a location recorder, of which there's many different models, what you have to do with a location recorder is you have to take out the SD card at the end of the session, move it into a computer, then open up a, a post-production session, and it takes a lot of time. It's not ideal. So this allows you to do everything in essentially one session. 
because you can record to the phone, you can do all of your editing, all your process, post processing, and send that recording off to uh, FTP or email, etc. Right, and if essentially you're done. You can finish post processing in the back of the cab. We're saying, you know, on the way back from the gig, and you're done. This thing is very lightweight. It connects to uh, Android phones, iPhones, computers, Mac and Windows, right? It has an eight hour battery. I will turn it off here. You just push this button. Very similar to, uh, you know, some of our other products. This is your battery indicator. So it shows you how much battery is, is still left. And then it's got two high quality mic frees with um, high Z inputs and uh, high pass filter in case you're doing an interview maybe outside and there's some wind noise that you oh, need to cut out. We use that a lot. Right, so these mic, mic pre's uh, are very low noise, low distortion. There's two controls. These are essentially zero latency monitoring controls, which is not available on the Micboard Pro, but so many people were asking for them. We added them in. This lets you adjust the balance of your own voice or the sound that's coming back from the computer. So if you're narrating to a music bet or you know some pre-existing track, this allows you to balance how much of that or, or how much you're of doing yourself Skype. You a Skype You're guidance doing a session. Skype session. Yeah, exactly. you want to hear less of them, more of you. Exactly. This is inputs three and four, which is also amazing for some music applications, but also perhaps for voiceover. You can feed a second stereo track into this thing and essentially narrate over that as well. So you can create a little monitor mix for yourself. Headphone output, line level output, and most importantly, built-in recorder. Whoa. It runs on a, on a, on a disc. There's a, a, a micro SD card that you put in, and then this recorder records in uh, the WAV file at 1648, which is perfect for you know most work that you do out there. So you can actually record to two places. You can record to uh, an iPhone or iPad, a computer, etc., and you can, in parallel, create a backup safety copy inside of this machine, right? Nice. Does, it also, does it also act as a USB interface? It does act as a USB interface. So when you record to the phone, you're using the USB interface portion of it, but at the same time, there's a second tape machine. I'm going to use the old term, right? That's it's inside a, of there. It's a backup. It's a backup, yeah. exactly. It's a fail-safe recording mechanism. Yeah. We also have a third recording mechanism in a way of an analog output jack, so you can record to camera if you're doing some camera work, right? Sure. And then you can technically print three different mixes which is amazing right is. price point on something like this we're currently thinking of a uh, uh, price point of retail price of 299 uh, without the recorder there's going to be a model without the recorder in case ah. you just want to print to um, to the phone that's great and then the recorder will add about 50 bucks amazing. we're also looking at a couple of XY microphones that we're going to be announcing as well those are prototypes yet yeah? And they will add another 50 bucks to the price of the product. Depending on the kind of customer, somebody may want that, somebody may not want that. I think most of the voiceover customers will still want to use this like they use the Micport Pro, meaning a short cable and a professional microphone that defines your sound. I think that's going to be the most popular use case. I think the backup recording feature in there is super valuable for people that do audiobooks or really long form. I get an email every couple of weeks. I hit stop on my doll or whatever and I lost my track. Or I had clicks and pops because my hard drive, if that was recording in the background, you'd save a huge amount of frustration being able to have that backup recording. Thank you. We believe that, you know, people are people, people make mistakes. It is, it, this gives you peace of mind. And uh, I would appreciate if I was doing a session and I had a backup track. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you very much, George. We're, we're, we're very happy to see this finally. All right, yes, looking forward to shipping a whole bunch of these very soon. How soon is it coming out? About two months. Two months. Two months. All righty. Right. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much, Dan. Thanks, Michael. Thank you for having me. Talk about fun. I mean, we had a great time there. I mean, we, we met people that we hadn't met before, people who I've wanted to meet for a long time, like like Guillermo and Miguel at, at Studio Bricks and, uh, and, and, and Michael Goodman there, who we met from uh, Centrance, who I've, you know, talked to many times and, you know, used a, a Centrance mic port pro. And uh, it was kind of interesting. And, of course, you were talking to some tuba guy, as I recall. <laughs> Man, I tell you, I wish I could split into 10 pieces. So I could have one guy walk the horn brass hall, one that walks just PA, one that walks the instruments, because there's so much stuff to see there. And just the small time we were there, Dan, how many people 
that we went into that I knew. He well, that, that, at least three or four people. That yeah, I, I mean, knew. yeah. Now I know I'm a local yokel, and I'm actually running into people I know at these things. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we said you saw some engineering friends of ours. You ran into somebody who was a, a, an old an old buddy from your live music days, and uh, and we and we met uh, Ron Knight. Uh, who some people might remember, and a bunch of other people. That was it. Was really really nice. Uh, it really was nice. not as overwhelming as my first time. <laughs> it was a, it's a total assault on the senses. Yes, absolutely. It, it's a huge assault on the senses. Just my first. Uh, yeah, I've been there know, how many times now, maybe eight or ten times. And the first few times I was there, I mean, you wander the halls almost aimlessly. Because you just have no clue what you're going to see there, and it's just all new to you. So this year, you know, came in there with a pretty clear idea of what we wanted to see. Trust me, we didn't see nearly everything. No, no, we did that not we wanted to see. Let alone everything we didn't know about. <laughs> That's how big the show is. I mean, North Hall is the size. I mean, I don't know, if, know how many of you have been to AES. That's a trade show that's specifically pro audio. Nothing else. This show is like that. One hall is the size of uh, the AES show. And there's North Hall uh, upper story, lower story, and then there's A, B, C, D, and E. Every one of those halls is twice the size of AES. Yeah. yeah. It is unbelievable. Yeah. And if you've ever been to NAB, it's about like that, too, which is huge. It is. It yeah. goes. I think that one hall is two football fields long, at least. It, it, it is. Four. I, I wore out a pair of shoes in that one. Of course, there were no yeah. drones at this one. NAB, it was all drones. Yeah, this one had a sign at the entrance saying, no drones allowed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got lots more video from Unless NAM. They were an instrument that you could crank making a droning sound. Yes. Anyway, you yeah, joke. There, there was that, actually. You know, and then there was the wall of symbols, <laughs> which oh, I, think, man. I think we actually have some video of that. Anyway, uh, We'll have, we have more video for you coming up from uh, Nam and Tom Deere will be joining us in just a couple of minutes, so stay right where you are. Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. We're here at NAMM 2018, and we're in the blue microphone booth talking with Gabe Weil. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for coming today. Our pleasure. One of the things that's really important in your home studio is how you suspend your mic. Some people will use a boom arm, some like a reticulated arm, and it appears that Blue has a, a new model of a reticulated arm. Tell us about it. That's right. This is called the Compass. It's our newest desktop boom arm. And as you can see, it's an enclosed spring design instead of a scissor spring design. And what that does for you, not only does it look fantastic, but it's quieter and it's smoother. It looks great on camera. We have hidden channel cable management. So you don't have to like undo, undo the cable and solder it back together inside the arm. Correct, correct. And uh, here you also have thumb screws on each of the pivot points. So if you like one certain position, you could just lock it there. Yeah, let, let's, let's show that. Yeah. You can see the, the thumb screws here that will loosen that up. That's great. Um, or the springs balance it and you can move it around. So you can either have it kind of loose and move it around or you can lock it in place. It all depends on what you want to do. Uh, it works with all standard threading on whatever microphone or shock mount you have. And uh, uh, it has a great desktop mount that comes with it. Okay. And But can it be mounted uh, straight onto Fixed something? Mounted, yes. Yeah. Uh, so through our website, you'll be able to get a uh, bushing that allows you to insert directly into a desk as well. Outstanding. Um, it will support even a heavy a heavy condenser right, microphone. Yeah, it supports up to 2.4 pounds, uh, which is great for, we have a USB microphone called the Yeti. So Yeti together with a shock mount, it works perfectly with this. Or if you happen to have a larger broadcast microphone, works great with this as well. And what's the price point on something like this? So we're not, we haven't quite announced the price point yet. We'll be shipping in March and we'll be announcing in about two weeks, uh, but it'll be very competitive and we think you guys will be pleasantly surprised. I can't wait to try it myself. Fantastic. All right. Uh, Source Elements creates the software Source Connect Standard Pro 
and live and many other products. The ones you guys are probably most interested in are source kicks and that's really well suited for voice actors. It's one of the most affordable tools out there that allows you to connect to another studio in very high quality audio reliably and it's definitely the most commonly found connection software available for professional audio use. It is going to be in the studio that you're working with 99% of the time more than likely. If you're ever working with a studio who doesn't have Source Connect, let us know. We'd love to know. But if you want to give it a try, go to source-elements.com and give a free trial. Give it a shot. See what you think of Source Connect. And also, you can always try their new beta tool, which is Source Connect Now. Totally free, works between web browsers, and it's a great alternative to Skype. Sound, sound much better. I really appreciate your sponsorship, Source Elements, and we'll be right back here with Dan and Tom back in the studio right after this. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Are you confused about how to set up and about it? That's right, this is called the Compass. It's our newest desktop boom arm. And as you can see, it's an enclosed spring design instead of a scissor spring design. And what that does for you, not only does it look fantastic, but it's quieter and it's smoother. Looks great on camera. We have hidden channel cable management. So you don't have to like undo, undo the cable and solder it back together inside the arm. Correct, correct. And uh, here you also have thumb screws on each of the pivot points. So if you like one certain position, you could just lock it there. Yeah, let, let's, let's show that. Yeah. You can see the, the thumb screws here that will loosen that up. Yeah, that's great. Um, or the springs balance it and you can move it around. So you can either have it kind of loose and move it around or you can lock it in place. It all depends on what you want to do. Uh, it works with all standard threading on whatever microphone or shock mount you have. And um, uh, it has a great desktop mount that comes with it. Okay. And But can it be mounted uh, straight onto Fixed something? Mounted, yes. yes. Uh, so through our website, you'll be able to get a uh, bushing that allows you to insert directly into a desk as well. Outstanding. Um, it will support even a heavy a heavy condenser right. microphone. Yeah, it supports up to 2.4 pounds, uh, which is great for, we have a USB microphone called the Yeti. So Yeti together with a shock mount, it works perfectly with this. Or if you happen to have a larger broadcast microphone, works great with this as well. Yeah. And what's the price point on something like this? So we're not, we haven't quite announced the price point yet. We'll be shipping in March and we'll be announcing in about two weeks, uh, but it'll be very competitive and we think you guys will be pleasantly surprised. I can't wait to try it myself. Fantastic. All right. Having dinner tonight? How about having some VO too? Voiceover Body Shop. Have some voiceover with your dinner tonight on Voiceover Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Tom Deere is a New York based voice actor with over 20 years of experience. He's narrated thousands of projects for hundreds of clients in over a dozen countries. Tom's experience as a corporate trainer as well as a voice talent make him uniquely qualified to help both aspiring and veteran voice talents navigate the voiceover industry. And let's say hello to Tom Deere. Tom, welcome. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing just fabulous. It's great to have you here on VoiceOver Body Shop once again. Um, yeah. 
Anything new and exciting happening in your life uh, as far as voiceover is concerned? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, I got this guy. All right. You got your Transformer guy. This is Jax. Uh, it's part of a new game called Lightseekers, uh, which is a, a phone game you play on your uh, phone or tablet. And uh, it also comes with action figures that have a Bluetooth connection with it. So when you're running around in the game, you can hear me. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, check me out. Got to get the tail into it. Who needs brawn when you got brains? And then I shoot you. <laughs> choof, choof, choof. <laughs> yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's been the fun thing. All right. I, we love it. <laughs> Sorry. So you can go to lightseekers.com and check that out check and get out. your kids. Play it. It's no play that it too. Yeah, we love our job. It's it, it, we get to do fun stuff like that. It's uh, so boring. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but onto some stuff that ain't necessarily so fun, and <laughs> right. because everybody's been asking about this, and there's been a lot of Facebook discussion about it, and a few seminars about it, and that's the new tax code, which mm. I guess really isn't going to affect us until next year. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I've written some blogs about this and I've talked about it in some of my classes. Uh, so I've done some research on the tax code. Um, I had some help from fellow voice talent, Stephen J. Cohen, uh, who helped me out a little bit. And the tax code is, it depends on who you are, whether it's going to be a good thing, a bad thing, or just a thing. Um, I noticed the big difference is whether you are a union voice talent which means you get W-2s, which means your filing is a Schedule A, or whether you're a non-union voice talent where you're most likely going to be getting 1099s and you're going to be filing as a Schedule C. Um, if you're filing a Schedule C, it's going to be pretty much the same and maybe even a little bit better in some areas. I mean, the, the tax brackets, most of us are going to be paying less taxes. Yeah. I'm assuming, the, yeah, which is good. We like that. I'm assuming the majority of uh, voice talkers that are in here are going to be making somewhere between 30 and 80,000. If that's the case, your tax bracket goes from 25% to 22%. So that's a good thing. Um, uh, If you're Schedule A, people are still trying to figure out whether if you're a Schedule A, a union voice talent, whether you'll still be able to write off your, um, whether you'll be able to itemize your deductions. Um, it looks like no. Some people say yes. Um, teachers are still able to write off their uh, school supplies and stuff. They're able to write off their continuing education certification. But we're not sure if that's a carve out just for educators or whether it applies to everybody. Um, I still look around online. I look at articles. Unfortunately, the vast majority of articles that I see on the Internet are grossly biased politically one way or the other, left or right. So it's really hard to get a straight answer. So when it comes to all of that stuff, talk to your CPA. Um, and uh, I mean, we're pretty much going to have to wait till next year to really see how all of this uh, pans out. But save all your receipts or you know, keep everything organized, track all your expenses, do everything that you've done in previous years. And you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, might be one of those things where you just lump it all in together and, and just add it up, which is right. Uh, which right. is what I oh. do anyway. So I right um, on that. And, and to that point, if you are Schedule A and Schedule C, um, you can take the stuff that if you may not be able to write it off as Schedule A, a anymore, take it over to your Schedule C and use a make it a business deduction. But you got to be careful that you don't take a loss too often because then the IRS will designate your voiceover career as a hobby and then you can't write off anything. So be careful about that. Okay. Well, let's say that one more time. <laughs> if, you, if you take a loss too much when you file as a Schedule C, if you take a loss too often, I think two out of five years or more than twice out of every five years, the IRS will declare that you're a hobby and then you can't write off anything anymore. Okay. So don't lose anything. Spend nothing. Yes. It's no. Not well, yeah. <laughs> Spend on good coaching and all that kind of stuff. Yes. All right. Now, as a, as a coach for voice actors on voice business type stuff, mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure you've, you've met people who are very frugal and smart with their money. And then a lot of people who are, eh, you know, not so good. Right. What's your what's your philosophy on how to be smart with your finances as a voice actor? The big thing is to understand that you're not an employee anymore. You're a business. 
And employees make money, spend money, and save money differently than a business does. You got to get out of that nine to five mentality of uh, the ergonomics also of how you're making your money. You're not working for money. You're a business that's generating revenue. And the way you need to think about that and the way that the laws are structured around that are, are, are different. So, you know, the big question is, should I incorporate? Should I not incorporate? And that's been coming up a lot with this new tax code. You know, now that these tax code, these new tax laws are coming in, should I incorporate? Well, first off, I'm not a CPA or a financial advisor, so I can't give anybody any kind of financial advice. If you want that kind of advice, you should go to an actual professional financial advisor, preferably a fiduciary. Um, those are the ones who are, by law, are sworn to help you invest to, on your behalf to protect your interest, not to you know give them the best commissions. But do not incorporate or, or unincorporate because of the new tax code, based on what I said before, nobody knows what's going on. Um, so you can't worry about it in that context. I will say that if you make more than $150,000, it may be a good idea to incorporate. And if you make less, it's probably not worth it because of the, the, uh, the fees and everything that's in, involved. Yeah, depending uh, on which state you do that in, too. Because it's, well, that's the other thing. Uh, that's the other thing. There, uh, there is a website out there. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, I think it's LLC University and LLCUniversity.com. And it shows you by state all the laws and guidelines and fees if you want to form an LLC. By the way... An LLC is not a corporation. It's a limited liability company, which you can either decide whether you kind of want to go in the direction of sole proprietor or go in the direction of uh, a corporation. corporation. That'll depend. That'll, you know, it's depending on how and in how and which, which way you want to pay your taxes. Right. So an LLC, not a corporation. Okay. Good to know that. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it always amazes me how, you know, Personally, I think a lot of people overstate how much money they make in voiceover. Uh, yes. <laughs> it seems to be a popular topic amongst, you know, if you're, if you're talking with a lot of voice actors. But uh, sure. it's good to know that there's, there's that, that's a good cutoff point at $150,000. Uh, mm -hmm. One, it says you're doing really well. And two, it's probably a good time to, uh, to do that. Yeah. Uh, one of the things you like to talk about is something called the sales funnel sort of changing gears here from the finance stuff yes what's the sales funnel all about the sales funnel it's, it's something i've only discovered in the past year or so um strangely enough in the context of i produce uh, i'm producing comic book i have been for a few years and um we've been trying to figure out uh marketing and advertising strategies online and so in our studies and research we learned about the sales funnel so now i apply that to the voiceover industry to the point that I actually have an entire seminar that talks about the, um, the sales funnel. And basically what that is, it's literally, you know, imagine a, you know, a funnel. There's a bunch of different uh, interpretations of it, but I, in the way I like it, there's four areas. There's your brand awareness, consideration, decision, and advocacy. And what you want to do is get voice seekers to enter and push them through that sales funnel. Cameron Gregg, who's a fellow voice talent, I was talking to him about this concept and he said, oh, you want people to find you, vet you, choose you, and love you. And he's absolutely right. And then figure out what part of your marketing strategy do these areas uh, apply to. So, and that's all, there's a whole lot of, that, that's a whole lot of detail, a lot of serious detail. Right. But um, basically brand awareness is get them to know you exist. Um, which, impl which involves a lot of inbound and outbound marketing. Uh, consideration is now that they know that you exist, they need to know about you and what you can do and what you can do well. The decision, they listen to your demos, they send you an audition, they interview you to maybe be added to their talent roster, whether it's a casting site or whether, uh, whether you're an agent, they're an agent. And then the advocacy, which is once you've booked the gig and you get in the booth and you wow them and you evangelize the client, you do such a great job that they they want to come back to you for more and more. So you get them as a regular client. So that's in a nutshell what the sales funnel is. Mm, okay. So it's, it's making sure that you've got lots of different things to throw into the funnel. Yes. Lots of content to generate engagement, 
to, you know, based on where they are in the sales funnel to get them to cast you and adore you and never consider anyone else again for a voice project. Right. Voice over project. Right. Of course, there's also doing a great job for them. Which is yes, always, not sucking is a, is a part of that formula. Yeah. Yes. yeah, get it right. You get it when you get the opportunity, do it right. Uh, yeah. n- now, you're just starting a new gig here. with uh, It's with Abacus Entertainment. Tell us all about yes. that. Uh, Abacus Entertainment is a great recording studio in uh, New York City. And um, they are similar to Edge Studio, who I am still uh, a proud member of the Edge Studio family. I'm just spreading my wings. Um, Abacus Entertainment is a recording studio, and also they have a a training program. So I work with uh, Sarah Waters, who many of you know. She is the creative director of Abacus Entertainment. And uh, they have a great new uh, staff. They just started building this coaching group. Lisa Biggs is one of them as well as Anne Ganguza, who's out in your neck of the woods, who I adore. Um, so I'm teaching uh, business classes and marketing classes. I just taught a few weeks ago, Get Your Blank Together in 2018, which is the first of a series of classes that I'll be teaching. And it's both live, so you can be there in New York City at the studio. And also you can uh, register online and through Zoom, you can participate in the class as well. All right. Well, if you're just joining us, where the heck you been? Uh, we're talking with with Tom Deere in uh, New Jersey, and he's uh, he's a voiceover business coach as well as a very accomplished voice actor. If you've got a question for him, throw it in our chat room, either on Facebook or in our amazing interactive chat room uh, on our website, uh, and the amazing Jack Daniel will get that question to him, and that will also provoke lots of interesting discussion. So how was 2017 for you, Tom? Um, It was a down year. I had a down year, um, about 20, 25% down. Uh, And I've talked to a lot of my fellow voice talents who are in the same, I guess we'll call it strata of voiceover experience and income. And a a lot of people had a down year last year. I mean, don't worry, I'm okay. Paid all my bills, saved for retirement, went and had fun. You know, everything's okay. Um, but, but yeah, a lot of us made less money than we have in previous years. And hmm. I've been trying to figure out why, why that's been the case. And I think it's because of a couple things. Um, I know for a fact I auditioned a lot less, especially in the second half of the year, because Voices.com bought VoiceBank. And yep. as a result, I refused to audition for VoiceBank projects. Good for you. Thank you. Um, it's, I've, learned, I've noticed it's getting harder and harder to replace clients. More and more clients are going away and using other, alter, other methods, whether it's a pay-to-play site or doing it themselves or getting their niece who wants to be a movie star or getting the intern to do it. Um, also, I think this is a theory that I have is that I think another reason why there weren't as many projects to go around last year is because I think a lot of businesses were wondering whether the tax bill was going to pass. And they knew that if the tax bill passes, it's a Republican administration, Republican platform is to lower taxes. And that's what they were, how they were spinning it and trying to sell the thing. And um, they would know that if the tax bill passes, there's going to be more money for them to do any of a number of things to lower debt. If they're a big company to do uh, stock buybacks or cut dividend checks or do bonuses like AT&T and a a couple of other companies have done. I think Walmart did it too. Um, That also means they have a bigger budget for projects. Now, most of the companies that hire, you know, blue collar voice talents like you and me aren't all necessarily Ford and Coca-Cola, but they're, you know, a couple tiers down that may not necessarily be uh, they may not necessarily be on the stock market. So that means they will have more money for projects. And I've already noticed it's what January 29th. I've noticed a couple of clients that I didn't work with last year kind of poke their head out and, and some of them have actually booked me. Hmm, so excellent. I, yeah. I, so I think that, I think the tax code, the not knowing if the tax code is going to pass or not did keep a lot of, you know, hands in their pockets last year yeah that, that makes a lot of sense so yeah. uh let me ask you this because you you were we were talking about the the uh the voice bank thing uh a few minutes ago mm-hmm. do you tell your clients 
this that you're not going to work you know if if they if they're going to go through them you're not going to you're not going to audition through that anymore or do do you inform them about what this what the issue is yeah um what i did was i i do a quarterly newsletter like many voice talents but my quarterly newsletter isn't the me 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 show hey listen what listen to this great thing i did don't i sound awesome i mean i have plenty of other time to do that um what i do in my newsletters is i take that opportunity to educate my clients or inform them hey this is what's going on and the last one the four, one that i did in the fourth quarter was to say hey for those of you who aren't aware this is what's happening in the voiceover industry some of you may be using them some of you may not and you know and that's when i did let them know that you know i'm not a fan of this particular business model and i will not be uh engaging in i will not be working with clients who are working with pay to play sites like like voices.com and that use and that use voice bank. I also told my agents that and one of my agents I'm sure it wasn't only because of me uh I know that many of us told this particular agent that if you send us voice bank generated auditions we just won't do them. And then shortly after that they started including in the uh, project description that this is a voice bank project and they said you're welcome to not take that audition. if it's a voice bank project and i haven't and a lot of our, my fellow voice talents haven't so many of them have adjusted and then that other group of agent another group of agents made the vo agent alliance right right yeah it's, so it takes a little bit of hutspa to actually bring that up with the client there it's an it's, it's an important relationship and you don't necessarily want to you know rock the boat with them but i think right. if you're a voice actor today and you really want to make a difference making sure that the truth is told out there and that people yeah. have the opportunity to hear at least our side of it and how we're not getting ripped off they're getting ripped off in a situation right. like yeah, that that's the thing all relationships are based on communication and trust whether it's a personal relationship or a professional relationship and we need to let our and oh, let the voice seekers know to let our our end clients know that this is what's going on um we have standards you know i mean some of us are in the union some of us are are not in the union but we i'd like to think that all of us have standards and we have a way that we wish to comport ourselves in this industry and we wish to comport ourselves with professionalism and dignity and integrity um and any time that you uh make an attempt to communicate that to someone that has the same values that you do it's going to strengthen the relationship and the people who don't share those values will hopefully go away so right. you know what i mean oh, so absolutely. like i love it when people unsubscribe from my newsletter it's like <laughs> one of my favorite things it's like oh good now i don't have to you know that we're not on the same page anymore so great you be over there i'll be over here and that's cool right well i'm glad to hear you're doing that it it takes a little bit of gazungas to do that but yeah you really need to i and i i i encourage everybody to tell people the truth about what's going on out there it, it'll only help let me ask you this uh, tom i mean it's a tough business to start with i mean we're we're auditioning we're doing all the things we need to do to be successful why is it harder now more than ever to market yourself as a voice actor great question um well first off there's just too many of us out there now um i truly believe that there is no competition in the voiceover industry uh however i believe that right now there are too many untrained bottom feeders in the voiceover industry that are screwing it up for everybody else um so there is even more than ever this huge wall of white noise of every deep based yuts with a usb microphone <laughs> you know trying to do what we do for a living i mean nobody thinks they can pick up a violin and start playing it at a concert level immediately but everybody thinks just because they can talk they can do this for a living you know owning a wrench does not make you a plumber owning a pen does not make you an author you know so but for some reason it's oh i can talk so i can do this for a living right well no you need training you need acumen you need discipline you need integrity so there's just just too many of us that are untrained there's plenty of work for everybody that knows what they're doing. Um I also think the pay to play sites have damaged the industry. I think that's making it harder to market yourself. Um specifically when it comes to SEO, many of the pay to play sites have dominated uh search engine optimization. So when voice seekers or aspiring voice talents are, you know, looking to get into the 
industry as a voice talent or if a voice seeker is looking to cast voice talent and they start typing in stuff on Google and the pay to play sites come up first, they're like, oh, okay, well then, yeah, I'll go, I'll go do that, you know? And so that hurts. Yeah. Um, and um, inbound and out marketing, inbound marketing is tougher than ever. Outbound marketing is tougher than ever. Also because the voice seekers, think about it, Dan, think about how many inboxes you have. Mm, you got just mail. a few. Yeah. Yeah. You got your voicemail, right? Yeah. You got your text messaging. You got your email. You got Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, you can accept, you can get messages on Instagram. I mean, what did I just name? Five, six, seven. Yeah. I love it when people contact me on Facebook messenger. Yeah. It's like, I don't check that. You didn't well, get my yeah. message. What? Well, that's the thing. And some people solely rely on Facebook messenger for their for their correspondences with friends or clients so there's all these different ways to communicate with people and i can't i can't even imagine what it's like for a casting director's office and how they're con just constantly tidal wave over after tidal wave of phone calls and 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 emails with their mp3s of their demo attached you know and 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 you know stuff stuffed in envelopes and and postcards like these people are just being completely crushed with aspiring voice talents and their crappy marketing. I mean, <laughs> did you hear like last in the past couple of weeks, there's a production company who's starting to charge, charge. Yep. voice talents to be put on their roster. I mean, what the hell is that? Well, the, the, a lot of these guys have fallen behind the times and have lost a lot of money and they think that's the model to get it back. Yeah. And I think it'd be much smarter if, if agents would jump in and look at how it is we're marketing ourselves Mm -hmm. And look at the e-learning jobs and the narration jobs and the and the explainer videos and find that work for us. But they're relying on a lot of old stuff, and if this is how they're reacting to it, then they're not going to end up winning in the long run. Well, that's the kind of the good thing when there's like you know um, seismic changes to industries. Like you know, 15 years ago, all the advertising agencies and marketing companies and newspapers just started dying on the vine because they kept going on. And I'm assuming a few agencies and you know sites are going to go out of business as a result of this because they don't know how to adapt. And if they don't know how to adapt, then you know, then they're supposed to go out of business. You know. Right. One more quick question. And again, if you have a question for Tom, dear, throw it in the chat room so we can bring it up in our next segment. But uh, so how do we as voice actors adjust to this new environment? Oh, that's a big, that's a, that's a big one. You need to focus on being a, a more effective voice talent. And how do you do that? Well, there's a, you know, there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, first, you got to know what's reasonable and possible with who you are, what you can do, and what you can charge. Um, when I say that, I mean what you can charge in relation to what the demand is. Since the barrier for entry is lower, rates are lower. That's just kind of how it is now. Um, I mean, yes, I still have a lot of clients that I command rates that are commensurate with the industry standard. And there's others where, you know, some massaging has to take place for everybody to be happy. You know, um, do I have effective specific goals? Do I have effective cash flow? This is another reason why aspiring voice talents fail by the bushel is because they don't have the capital. They are impatient and they start without properly investing in their training, in their demo, in their equipment, and they can't sustain it. And if they can't sustain it, they're going to go out of business too. And do I have an effective marketing strategy, which is, you know, a whole bunch of different things, which I assume we're going to talk about a little more. Bit, Hopefully, uh, later. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's learning how to be effective in 2018, how to be effective, because what worked three years ago, I don't think even works anymore. I mean, postcards, cold calls, I mean, do they are, I mean, I haven't really had an effective uh, cold calling or postmark postcard campaign in a long time. I'm sure there's some of our listeners that some stuff have worked for them. I know the great announcer, Doug Turkel is in there and he's a brilliant marketer and brander. Um, but you know, your conventional marketing strategies just don't work anymore. Right. Well, it's times they are a changing and you have to be astute. You've got to be culturally literate. You have to really know what's going on in the world and how, it affects you and our business. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking with Tom Deere. Again, if you've got a question, we're going to take a little bit of a longer break because we want to show you some more stuff from NAM. So it gives you a little bit of time 
to think up a question to ask him. And we'll get to it in the next segment. Thanks for being with us, Tom. We'll be right back on Voice Over Body Show. Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought yeah. for those who don't yeah. have a voice. The yeah, National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need yeah, to stroke a llama. Really double Instagram. doors. And Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All righty. Home voice, uh, uh, voiceoveressentials.com. Yes, voiceoveressentials.com. They have their new LED 20 color voiceover recording sign. And it is a home run. Here it is. Here's what it looks like. And I have it flashing right there. It is the best selling item on voiceover essentials. What? It's backwards? <laughs> It doesn't. If someone was looking at it from the other side, it would not have been backwards. Anyway, it's the best selling new item on VoiceOver Essentials since the Porta Booths and the V01A microphone. In, in fact, they totally sold out the first shipment, but they doubled their original order and they have arrived. And for a few days only, Harlan has knocked $10 off the price, but that won't last long. The one and only VO recording sign, now with 20-color LED illumination and a credit card-sized remote. Here it is. This is see, it's, credit. it's even smaller than a credit card, you know. But you can change the mode on it. It will, it will, just, it'll stay one color. It will flash. It'll do all sorts of cool stuff. So, it's a sign that has saved more relationships than the disciples of Freud. Make sure your significant others can see it, and odds are, when it, when it is on, they will not bother you when you're doing voiceover. Anyway, you want one? Go over to voiceoveressentials.com, and you'll find the sign. He's got a special on it, $10 off. Go over there right now. Best way, go right to the bottom of our page here. Click on the picture of Harlan Hogan talking into his marvelous Portabooth Plus Pro, whatever that is. And it will take you right there, and you can order one right now. Get yours. We're here at NAMM 2018, and we're talking with Kevin Zaccaro from Fluid Audio. Uh, well known for your studio monitors, but you also have a new thing, a digital interface. Tell us about it. So this interface is, is a lot like the other interfaces out there. Two channels in. All right, we're back. Tom Deere will be back with us in a second. But, man, it was, we, we got we, so much stuff that we saw at NAMM. And uh, we're gonna, we have all these videos. Where were we going to put them? We're going to put them on Facebook and... The YouTubes. <laughs> yes. So, by the way, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet. I think that's really important. I mean, we tell you to do that, but, you know, if you go there... Subscribe, and you'll get a lot more content from us than just this amazing show that you watch on Monday night. Anyway, uh, and it's we got voice over body shut up. Right, four words. In case you're wondering, uh, we got a couple of questions here, starting from uh, JV Martin, uh, Mr. Whittem. All right, first question from JV here says. Oh, I see the different one. This one's for, that's a tech one, yeah. not for Tom. All right, we'll do that later, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm an S Corp. What's the impact? I'm assuming this is about the tax yeah. law question. Um, let's start with one. 
do you think there's an impact on him? Do you know, is that something you know about? Tom? Uh, as far as I know, um, S-Corps, uh, there shouldn't be too much of an effect. I will say that S-Corps do tend to get audited more. So you just might want to make sure that you're, you know, on the straight and narrow with that. Um, the corporations, I mean, depending on how you set it up, you should be doing better as a result of the tax code. The new tax bill was designed to benefit corporations using the, and I know this is a bad word, the trickle down uh, effect, which we were from the Reagan years we heard, and they've been actually using that, um, using that term. And, but you know what, so far, at least on the news, there's been indications that a lot of the bigger companies are doing that sort of thing. But I think the smaller companies are doing it too, because I've just noticed in the past two weeks that, like I said, more clients are popping up when they didn't for almost all of last year. So, but do your research, talk to your accountant uh, to find out if there's any direct impact. As far as I know, I don't think there is. Yeah. There's a second part to the question, ironically, considering the next person who asked a question. But he says, also, I'm on LinkedIn, but I'm not very active. As somebody who wants to expand to e-learning and corporate narration, should I be embracing LinkedIn? I don't know, Tracy Lindley. Do you think so? <laughs> um, I see her in the chat room. I love you, Tracy. Um, yes, you should absolutely embrace LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a very, very powerful engine. I have actually gotten long-term clients off of LinkedIn. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Tracy has her own course uh, she created a, a an actual training course on how to use link, uh, LinkedIn effectively. Uh, the name of it escapes me, but Tracy, could you type it in the chat box for everybody to see? And I strongly suggest that everybody goes to that, and you can learn everything you need to know about how to build an effective profile on LinkedIn. Yeah, it, it's a great program too. It's just, and I've seen her do her presentation on it. She's just wonderful with with her energy on that. Yes. Um, well. Yeah, so Tracy actually, her question actually is, is, what should we look for in a CPA worth their salt? And I'll just insert here, not that you haven't made it clear enough, but you are not a CPA yourself, correct? You Ooh. should definitely consult one for yes. legal advice. Yes, and I'll give you that disclaimer as many times as necessary. <laughs> Do not take my direct <laughs> advice as the advice of a professional financial advisor, nor if you decide to do what I suggest and you lose your shirt, you cannot sue me or the voiceover body shop. So hit record twice on that one. Um, <laughs> is is um, it the COA or the CYA? Whatever it is. I'm I, yeah, what, something, it. something. Um, but a couple things you should look for in an effective uh, accountant. Word of mouth is a great one. You know, ask fellow voice talents or entertainers or um, self-proprietors in your area. Um, a couple other things. Make sure that your accountant has what's called a PTIN. Basically, it's this, you know, registration thing or number that shows that they are allowed to, you know, file taxes on your behalf. Um, also, if an accountant promises you big rent refunds or promises you bigger refunds than the competition, run fast. Okay, because that's not what it's about. Um, an effective CPA will make sure that you're filing your taxes legally and effectively and properly. And if they're good at what they do and they are experienced in tax law and they're experienced in working with someone who's filing a Schedule C or, you know, then they will find you, you will get deductions. You should, I mean, there's no guarantee you're going to get a refund because you may have had a good year and you had minimal expenses because you did all this investment last year in your tools and your marketing and your technique, and this year's the payoff. So you're going to pay more in taxes because you made more and your expenses were down because you did all the investing last year. Um, another important thing is make sure that the accountant works all year round, you know, that they're not just a seasonal accountant. Make sure because um, you may have questions for them. You may need to make an amendment to your, to your tax filing because of a mistake of some kind, either your favor, in your favor or not in your favor. Um, and the tax code is obviously changed and everyone's still trying to figure out what's going on. And the way we file next year could be a lot different than the way we file now. So right. make sure that they are available to, um, to answer questions. So, yeah, those are the big things that I would suggest when it comes to finding a good CPA. Yeah, not, not one that's a podiatrist or a chiropractor the rest of the year. 
Exactly. Yeah, could be a bit of a problem. A uh, question be. from Maxine Dunn. She says, it's yes. so oh, great. Go ahead. Yeah. go ahead, George. Oh, it's so great to see you here, Tom. Thank you so much for this great interview. Oh, sure. And yeah. And she says, uh, what's your favorite way to connect with prospective clients? Is it telephone or email? That's Contact a good make it to reach out to new clients. That, that's a very good question, Maxine. And it's great to see you. Thank you. Um, I have decided, and this is a direct result of going to FAFCON 9 in Charlotte last fall, that I'm going to be making some changes to my business model. One of them is, as a result of uh, joining the VoiceOver Bulletin Board back in 2006, which was my first introduction to meeting many of the great people in the VoiceOver. Me too. Community. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, I kind of scoffed at the, oh, I'm not going into New York City and do the rat race of just being another yachts going on this audition with 400 people that sound just like me. I am not doing that anymore. I am a 21st century voice talent. Um, I'm going to audition exclusively online. I even told my New York-based agents not to send me in for auditions anymore, for in-person auditions. And my career improved immediately. But that was a while ago. That was like 10 years ago. Things are different now. Um, so I'm going to start paying attention to my backyard. <laughs> it's over there. Um, that being New York City, which is like the biggest voiceover market in the world, right there with LA for you know different genres and stuff. So um, I am trying very hard to go with the mantra, one client at a time, and do everything I can to interact with them in person. Uh, the vast majority of voice talents are hiding in their booths because it's just easier. It's more convenient. It's safe in um, here. It is safe in here, and it's warm, <laughs> and you got your little Amy, Amy Snively Fafcon doodad that you could look at and poke with a little ducky and stuff, you know, and, you know, and if, if you feel lonely or down, you just go to a Facebook group and be like, oh, I love you guys, you know, and that's true, and I love all of you guys too, but you have a much better chance of establishing, developing, and nurturing a meaningful relationship if you interact with them in person. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, so, and yes, and there are many of you who are in, and I hate this term because it's just so rude and dismissive, the flyover states. Um, but you know what? There are still a lot of opportunities. Uh, what, what Corvo said in his, um, in what he was writing about, you know, marketing in your hometown, marketing in your backyard. Um, uh, there is the Chamber of Commerce. Like he said, there's Toastmasters, the Rotary Club, Le Tip. Um, meetup group, you guys know that meetup, we work bought meetup. Did you guys know that? Yep. So, uh, the, the marriage of the meetup group, you know, has like, Hey, we, you know, we want to get together, but you know, we're sick of doing it at Panera, you know, and we work, which is all these wonderful professional spaces have now combined forces. So now you have better venues that the, higher quality meetup groups are actually putting money in their pocket and going and using WeWork to use these great spaces. Right. So, um, and yes, Maxine, I do sometimes cold call. I do sometimes email. It all depends. It, it depends on the individual client. Um, I mean, there is an adage, you know, it's better if they, if the voice seeker hears you on the phone and it's a more personal engagement, but you know what? It's harder and harder to get voice seekers on the phone. It is easier to email them. So, yeah, it's a little more impersonal, but you have a better chance of getting their uh, attention or getting them to, uh, you know, call you back. Yeah. So it all depends on the it all depends on the client and what you want to do with that client and whether they're local or they're, you know, in another part of the country or another part of the world. Right. We've got one more question here from Christopher Thorne that you and I will have a fun time with. Uh, okay. He says, I'm relatively new to the business and simply don't understand the pushback with regards to Voices.com. Any chance you're willing to expound? No. <coughs> <laughs> I, I, I've got my own opinions, too, but what do you have to say about that? The first thing I'll say about pay-to-play sites is they're like guns, fire, or polka music. It's not what they are. It's what you do with them that makes them an instrument of good or evil. Okay. 
Um, there are a couple, a number of pay to play sites out there that are wonderful. Uh, Badalgo, we all sing the praises of Armin and Badalgo, which yeah. for those of you who don't know, is a German uh, based uh, pay to play site run by Armin, who believes and practices 100% transparency on both the part of the voice talent and the voice seeker. Uh, E-Learning Voices in Canada, run by Rick Gordon. I've been on there for many, many years. Um, he focuses primarily on e-learning projects, industrials, employee stuff. He's also fantastic. He is also transparent and allows you to negotiate uh, rates with your client. Um, Voices.com, there have been multiple accounts, uh, one of which I'm actually going to be publishing in my blog tomorrow, um, of business practices that we're not, not entirely sure that we understand. So many of us in the voiceover industry have been confused. When you see a project that's on voice one, two, three, and the pay to the voice talent is a certain amount, and then you see the same exact job posting on voices.com, but the amount that the voice talent's supposed to get is in the neighborhood of 90% less. Less, yeah. So from what we seem to understand is that you pay, what, $400 to be on Voices.com, and then they have various levels it, it of account. It seems to depend on how long you've been there and, and how much you're right. willing to so invest. That in itself is a little yeah. interesting. And then they um, try to take money on the back end. Some say, what, 20% or something like that. But then also there seems to be this odd disconnect disparity between what they say they're what they tell the voice seeker they're paying the voice talent and what they actually pay the voice talent and we're talking differences of we'll call them commissions of 50 60 80 percent so this is not the way in my humble opinion if all of these things are true this is not how an ethical business would comport themselves. Yeah. And, and so that, Dan, yeah. how about you, Dan? Well, I've, you know, you, I, you explained it really well. I mean, you've, you've got a company here that is trying to shove its hand into the pocket of a pile of voice actors who should be making better money. And they, all they see is dollars and we're not fighting their dollars. The people we need to talk to, as we mentioned earlier, is our own clients and the producers and have them spread the word that this really unethical thing is going on and mm -hmm. that they're being completely untransparent. They're not telling the clients where their budget is going. They have a budget of $1,000 in there. Suddenly, 800 of it is going to the pocket of voices.com. Yeah. And, uh, and it shouldn't be that way. We're the ones that worked hard to get where we are and trained and worked with our coaches and invested in our equipment, where do they get off taking that much money out of our pockets? And that's what's wrong with it. Yeah. Uh, does anybody know if the VO Atlanta uh, panel from 2016 that J. Michael Collins moderated is still around? Um, if you can find it, it may still be on YouTube, and they have representatives from Voices.com and Badalgo and a couple of others talking about the subject. It's very interesting. You may want to check that out. Absolutely. Well, Tom, as always, it's a pleasure having you on our show and your expertise, which everybody appreciates. Again, if they want to get a hold of you, where can they get a hold of you? Uh, VOStrategist.com if you want to contact me directly. Uh, if you want to work through the fine folks at Edge Studio or Abacus Entertainment, you can go to their respective uh, websites and you can book me either for an individual consult. I can help you uh, do a diagnosis of your voiceover business where I ask you a series of very uncomfortable questions about your voiceover <laughs> business and help put together an action plan. Fabulous. That was great, Tom. You were just great tonight. That's all really good information. Thanks. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Tom. Oh, thanks Thank for having you, me. All righty. Thank always. you. Have a good night. Thanks. All right. We'll be back to wrap things up into a nice tight little ball right after these words. 
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. George for Voiceover Body Shop, and we're here with the amazing CAD Microphones, who has made just amazingly well-designed products at a great price point. But I wanted to hear about one that maybe hasn't been heard about as much in the voiceover community that's really interesting. And here to tell us about it is Kelly. How you doing, Kelly? I'm doing great. Nice doing to meet great. you. Nice to meet you, too. So Thank you for stopping by. My pleasure. A lot of us know about the famous E100S, which is behind you back here. We talk about it a lot. We love it for voiceover. But the 179 has some tricks up its sleeve, and I've heard some good things about it. What's unique about that Well, one? what's really great, it, typically most studio condenser mics, you'll see they have a single Single pattern or maybe they have two or three sometimes four right it, well what we've done with this the, the M179 has an infinitely adjustable polar pattern that you can dial up on the fly it goes all the way from figure of eight you open up it a bit to to hypercardioid supercardioid cardioid in the center then you get looser cardioids and it goes all the way to omnidirectional and it's instantaneous, it's noise free, and you can do it on the fly when you're checking your audio. So that's the magic of the M179. So like, in, for example, in a small booth, dialing that in, what would you be listening for? Well, dialing what you'll be listening to, ambient noise, or your reflections, yeah. okay? And also proximity effect, all that, changes with the polar pattern and that's yeah. a, a nat, that's natural physics yeah and then so, what are the switches on there too okay it also comes with a low cut switch like most microphones and a pad for loud sound sources very cool it's a 1.1 inch double condenser two diaphragms one in the back one in the front that's how we create the polar patterns very nice what's the price point on that the, the i gotta look it up i lost the sign the price is 229 Oh, that's very nice. Well, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you Thanks for stopping for by. It's great, George. Great appreciate show. it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your mic back. The awkward Here's, here's, hand. Your, here's your AT mic back. Shake hands. Yeah. Yeah, you have to always cover the logo. <laughs> Thanks again. Right, I appreciate it. Tom had some great information there, and uh, so we really appreciate him joining us uh, tonight on VoiceOver Body Shop. Uh, also, if you're if you're interested in Tracy Lindley's program on LinkedIn, it's called TheLinkedInEdge.com. TheLinkedInEdge.com. Great program. It's very enlightening, and she's done a great job of putting that course together. Um, next week on this show, on this very show, in this very room. The one and only Debbie Derryberry will be joining us once again. Uh, you know, the voice of Jimmy Neutron, for those of you who don't know her. But, you know, and a lot of stuff that she's working on right now, like F is Her Family and a number of other shows. You hear, like, hey, there's Debbie Derryberry's voice. Uh, she'll be joining us, and I think her band Honey Pig may also be with us. So that could be interesting. Uh, February 12th, a guy that we've wanted to have on for a while, Tim Tippett's who is one of that handful of people on the face of God's green earth that know the stuff that George and I know about home studios. And uh, we're going to have a very interesting discussion with him and his thoughts on all this stuff that we talk about and what this show is uh, about, which is studio tech. Uh, you know Tim at all? Have you talked to him? Here and there. Um, we're going we're gonna to commiserate a bit about some stuff, especially the Universal Audio Apollo, which... 
he and I have been both geeking out about pretty much since it came. So that'll, that should be interesting. Yeah. It's going to be a pretty geeky show. Yeah. Uh, then on February 19th, a guy who, if you were in radio, you know who he was because he's just, he was a guy who was involved in letting disc jockeys know what was funny and, and stuff like that. But he's been very involved in the voiceover business and, uh, He's got a course out on ACX, the ACX Masterclass, and that's Dan O'Day, who's a, a funny guy and uh, a great guy to talk to. We're going to have him on on February 19th, learning a little bit more how to do audiobooks better. On February 26th, it says Roger Rose, but we're waiting to see. Uh, and on March 4th, Carlos Alagrazaki. Did I say that? Not even close. Alagrazaki. That was better. Yeah, he's uh, he's he does animation work and stuff. So we got a huge lineup of people coming on over the next month. So that's going to be really cool. Who are our donors of the week? I was just copying pasting them in right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got we got a handful of them. These are these are all folks who are are perennial donors to the show, which is really, really great. Thank you so much uh, to Andrew Kaufman, uh, Anland Productions. Shana Pennington Baird, Eric Aragoni, who pretty much donates every single show, uh, Diana Birdsall, and Patty Gibbons. It's really kind of you to have uh, given us a little bit of extra money out of your hard earned royalty checks <laughs> from that yeah. come in the mail. <laughs> uh, we, really, we really appreciate it. And uh, if you want to help us out, you can donate as well. There's a donate button on the page. Uh, you can donate a buck for the show if you liked Tom particularly. You can donate it's a little right up there. for the show tonight, or you can subscribe and send a buck, two, ten, whatever, uh, on a, on a regular basis. So uh, we really appreciate that little bit of extra help. Yeah, and of course, George and I are the guys that know how to do the home studio stuff. If you want to get a hold of George, you talk to George the Tech dot com. George the Tech dot com for anything home studio audio, home studio, acoustics, uh, even podcasting and webcasting. I've done it for a while now. I can help you out. Cool. All right. And if you need help with your home studio and you're in the Valley or you're anywhere, I can talk to you. Uh, I am at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, I have a Dropbox, which is a specimen collection cup. Go to my homes page. Click on that. It will take you in there. I get the most interesting stuff from people. <laughs> some of it's audio. <laughs> and some of it's... I also want to slip one more extra little plug go, in there. Go for I'm it. also working from my home away from home here in Boulder, Colorado this week. And if you'd like a house call from me and you're for, you know, within about an hour or so from Boulder, uh, let me know. I will be uh, make myself available to you. We can talk. Again, just find me over at georgethetech.com. And you get a rare house visit from myself in that area. Yeah. And we, we love to go into people's closets. We really do. It's sniff around. Where's the best place for you to do your voiceover work? Anyway, we've got a podcast of the show. If you, if you, can't, if you can't watch us here on, on, uh, on our website, you can listen to the podcast on Stitcher Radio, iTunes, anywhere fine podcasts are sold. If you actually would ever pay for one. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you'd like to be in our audience, we actually have an audience tonight. We got two of our buddies are in here. John and, and Denny are here along with Jack. There they are. Wave. All right. It's a fun show to watch. And we'd love to have you here. If you're in the greater Los Angeles area, uh, let us know the Monday night you can come and write to us at the guys at VOBS dot TV. The survey. We use the survey. Don't we use the survey? <laughs> we absolutely do. We, we definitely value your input about the show, how we produce it, who's on, what we talk about, what you guys buy from our sponsors. Also important for us to know, so we appreciate any input you do have for us. All righty. Click Thanks. on the survey link right up there on VOBS.TV. Right up there. All righty. Uh, well, we, speaking of sponsors, we need to thank our sponsors, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO to Go Go. 
uh, voiceactorwebsites.com and and J. Michael Collins for providing an uh, uninterrupted live stream and bandwidth tonight. All righty. Well, we need to thank Marcy. I tell you, it sounds like a tuberculosis ward in my house. Everybody's got me, Zycam. It didn't stop me. That's the, that's the secret to it. But we need to thank her for letting us be here out in the garage. Our producer, Catherine Curridan, for finding great guests like Tom Deere, who was so informative tonight. Uh, Jack Daniel on chat room duty. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> and uh, our, our wonderful technical director, Susan Merlino, who's working her butt off trying to get this thing to work tonight. And uh, Jack DeGolia for the show notes. And, of course, Lee Pinney, simply for being Lee Pinney. One of these days he's going to watch us. Well, we'll drop in. Anyway, we know this is not an easy business. That's why we bring you this type of information on home voiceover studios, on your business, on how to be a better voice actor. Join us here Monday nights, 6 p.m. Pacific East. It's 9 Eastern time and 8.30 in Newfoundland. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>